Hello, ladies and gentlemen, programmers. We're going to do robotics 3A. We're going to start coding it. We're going to do the first section of the coding. We're going to imp the import area, instance variables, declaration area, void setup. We're going to do all that. All right. <clears throat> so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to go to the assignment. Okay. So let's go to the assignment. Okay, so you're going to go to the assignment, and you're going to get um, the SICK code either here or here. So you're going to open it in a new tab and download it or open a new tab. And I put it two ways just so hopefully one of them will work. Um, so get that code, save it in your, into your folder with your name on it, and uh, we're going to go from there. Okay, get that code first. Download and open this sketch from Classroom Code, the import area. This is where we import libraries. What are we what are we importing here and why? See if you can answer that. If you don't know, ask me. All right, so let's open up this. Okay, so right here we have, this is the import area where you're going to import and include the libraries. And I have the comments here. So what you're going to do is you're going to select these little stars. That's where you're supposed to add the code. So we're going to say hashtag um, include. And then we're going to do the caret caret. And inside there, inside the carrot, we're going to do capital servo and dot H. Okay. And so basically what we're doing is like somebody, somebody basically wrote a whole library. So I showed you that little servo thing. Um, and it's it, it's semi-complicated to control this thing. And so somebody wrote a whole, um, a whole class on how to work with this thing. And they called it servo. And we're basically saying, hey, let's make a little attachment to that library so we can access all the uh, methods in there. So we can create a servo object, and then we can um, use all the methods that were wrote, written for the servo object. Okay, so make sure you do that. And let's go jump back to our spiel here. Um, so if you still don't understand what we're importing and why, let me know. But we're importing the servo library so that we can... Um, create a servo, uh, an instance of a servo class, and we can use that that object to control the servo. All right, next, let's code the instance variable or the global variables. Um, this is where we create instance variables, so we're going to talk about that. Okay, so write this down in your notes. An instance variable or a global var variable, also known as a field, is a bit of memory. Something It's like a little box in the computer's RAM that belongs to the whole class or in this case, the whole sketch. So we have this whole sketch we're doing is called the servo sketch. And when we write in pot position, we're basically making a box called pot position. So we're making a space in the RAM. And uh, we're saying the only thing that can go into that box is an integer or a whole number. Okay, so right now I have a five there. That actually wouldn't be there. The box is empty. So we've created an empty box. Um, this box or variable will store the position of the potentiometer, which is a little blue little knob that we turn, right? So it, it's going to it's going to read like, hey, where's that at? And it's going to stick the value in there. So we're not we're never going to write this code, um, but I wrote it for reference. So if you said pot position equals five, now it's like, oh, let's stick this thing in there. Oh, can we put it in there? Is it an integer whole number? Yes, it sure is indeedy. And then we can stick the five in there. Um, so write this down. If a variable is holding a number, so or an integer, um, the number is actually stored in the box. So we have this little space in the RAM, and that five is actually being stored in that space in the RAM. Okay. So write all that down. What's the only kind? Answer this question. What's the only kind of thing that can go into the variable? All right. Here we go. Um, so now we're going to, eventually we're going to write this servo my servo. And so, um, so when we write servo my servo, this is going to look in the servo library, find the servo class, and it's going to make a new servo class object, an instance of the servo class. Or we can visualize it as a little robot, okay? And it puts a reference to that robot or that instance of the class or the object into the box named my servo. When we make instances of a class, so if we make an instance of a class in GreenFit, we can sometimes see them like when we make a new crab. So, for example, if you're in you're working in Java and make a new crab and make a new object and put it in the world, you can see it. So it's like, oh, I can visualize it. In this case, we're making this robot. Same, We're doing the same thing. We're making a little robot guy. We're making a little guy. 
But in this case, we can see him. We can see what he can do, but we can't see him. Um, all right. So this is a um, this is a uh, handout. So make sure you grab your handouts, um, and then you're going to write this in there. Um, if a variable is holding a class, then it's then it's only holding a reference to the class. The class can't fit into the box, but a reference to it can live in multiple variables. Okay, so when we said, let's go back. When we said int pot position, and we said pot position equals five, we made a box. The little variable is super small. It fits great inside the box. It just sticks the five in the box, right? But when we say servo my servo, we're doing kind of the same thing. We're making a box in the RAM called my servo. Okay, it belongs to the sketch, right? That's what the rope represents. Um, but in this case, this guy is way more complex. The, the, we're making an object instead of shoving a little number in there. So this guy has a robot. He can do all sorts of things. He, he can, we can ask him to do, do things, and he can do it, right? And he doesn't actually live in the box. We're just having a reference to him. So it's as if we can we can pretend like he's in the box. When I say my servo, we talk to him just like when we said pot position, we can talk to the box. Um, but he can he doesn't actually live in the box. And the reason is, is he can live in multiple boxes. And oftentimes that's what you're going to find is that you're going to have one object. And like I have, in, have him in my servo and some other method or something, somebody else is going to have them in their own thing because they need to talk to him too. The weird thing about coding is if you want to talk to an object, you have to stick them in a box. It sounds kind of abusive, but they don't really care. They don't mind, and that's the only way you can communicate with them. So he's in a box called my server or a, a local variable, or pardon me, or a global variable or an instance variable called my servo. And when we say my servo, we can talk to him. What's the only kind of thing that can go into this variable? Well, the only thing can go is a servo object, the instance of the servo class. Okay. All right. Okay. So let's talk more about instance variable declaration. Um, the way that you do it is you say that, by the way, this is a handout. You, you say the variable type and then the variable name. So in this case, you say int pot position, um, right? So what, what type of thing can go to this box? In this case, is a whole number. What's the name of the box? Pot position. Okay assignment is we have at some point we're going to stick something in the box that's the whole point of a variable is to store something in it so you say the variable name equals expression so we would say something like um pop position equals 10. okay so that so that's what how we're putting something into the box all right um write this down and if you don't understand it ask me what that means Okay, um, here's examples. So int pot position is creating a box called pot position. The only thing that can go into it is an integer and it's empty. And then when we assign something or put something into it for the first time, that's called initializing. Initializing, you put something in the box for the first time. We'd say pot position equals 10 and then you stick a 10 in there. All right, let's go ahead and let's create these things. That was a lot of talking, not very much action. Let's make let's do a little action here. All right. So what we're gonna do he, now is we're gonna come down here and we're gonna do the instance variable declaration area. So we're gonna write some of that code that we were just looking at. So we're gonna say int pot int pot position semicolon. Okay, this variable will store the, the position of the potentiometer. So when I turn that little dial, it's going to store that number. All right. Um, and then over here, oh, I shouldn't have done that. So over here, we're going to say int servo, servo position. We're going to create a number. I didn't do it my space. Um, let's get these lined up. It looks nice that they're lined up. So get these little comments lined up. Um, so we're gonna. That's where the little the little robot thing that spins. We gotta tell it where we want it to go, and then finally, we're going to say, "Servo my servo." So now we've created an empty box that's gonna hold the robot that's gonna control 
the servo. If any of that didn't make sense, that's about the best I can do on a video. I can talk to you more in person. All right, good. So we have the instance variable declaration area created. I think let's, let's jump back over to the spiel and see where we're at. Okay, I think that's good for this video. Oh, no, let's do No, we'll do the void setup. That's easy. Um, all Arduino sketches must have two specific methods named setup and loop. The Arduino runs these methods automatically when it starts up or if you press the reset button. Setup is a constructor and runs once at the beginning. It helps set up your project. And then the loop runs over and over. That's what we actually do. All right, let's go ahead and code the void setup. Let's go ahead and code the void setup. All right, so... All right, notice though, I, before we get started, I have the opening and closing curly braces here. So right here, you're going to say void setup, no, not a capital S, parentheses, parentheses. Okay, and then you have your opening curly braces already made. All right, so this is a method. This is a setup method. It's a special method that runs one time at the beginning to set your project up. It's also would be called in Java, it would be called the constructor. Um, so now let's let's do this. We're going to say right here. We're going to say my servo attached. It has a parentheses and a semicolon here, and then it has parameters is nine. Okay, so let's take a look at what we're doing there. Let's go back to the spiel here, and we're going to figure out what that's doing. Okay, so when we say my servo dot attach nine, by the way, what's the dot called? All right, what we're doing is we're saying, oh hey, my servo. Oh, so look, there's not nothing in the box. Well, there is nothing in the box, but there's a reference to this guy over here. So it's the same as if you were in the box. So when we say my servo, this guy's like, what what y'all want? And we say dot attach. He's like, oh, I have a method called attach. I know how to do that. Um, what, what do you want me to attach to? And then you say, oh, I want you to attach to 9, which is uh, where the wire is attached. So now this guy is connected to the 9. So he's like, oh, OK, I'm going to send some information through 9. And so the hope is at the, at the end of this wire, there should be a servo. OK. Um, so now he, 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 so he's attached to 9. And then eventually, he's going to give some instructions to 9. All right. Okay, so now we're going to hit pause, and on the next video, we're going to do void loop.